Ischnoderma resinosum, also known as the resinous polypore. This mushroom has quite the ability, but first let's go over some of its identifying features. This resinous polypore is a saprobe, which means it receives nutrients from decaying organic matter. Found growing on dead trees, either logs or stumps, most of the time found growing on deciduous trees and rarely found growing on conifers, Isnoderma resinosum is found throughout the fall, which is why it's also known as the late fall polypore. You may find a single resinous polypore, but you'll usually see them growing in clusters together. Called the resinous polypore because it exudes a brownish resinous fluid, usually along the cap surface and particularly on young specimens. Kidney-shaped and stalkless, this mushroom changes in appearance quite a bit over time. Young specimens are round and lumpy with a soft velvety texture and the cap surface is brownish red and there's a distinct white margin along the perimeter. Young specimens are very dough-like. It's as if it's a moist, squishy, wet piece of Play-Doh. A young resinous polypore feels so bizarre in my hands. It feels like what I would imagine an alien's flesh would feel like. If you haven't felt a young resinous polypore, I recommend that you find one, give it a little squeeze, show it some love. This mushroom produces a white spore print and on the underside of the cap, you'll notice a white pore surface, which will bruise a brownish color. With age, the cap becomes more flat and wider and transitions from round to wavy. The flesh becomes rubbery when middle-aged and more hard when mature. Older specimens become wrinkled and develop crusty looking brownish black bands and a mature cap will be up to nine inches across and a little less than an inch thick. The resinous polypore is totally edible, particularly the young specimens, and it's easy to forage a lot of this mushroom as it is often found in abundance. Cooking this mushroom in a stew or soup is ideal as it has a moderately soft texture when cooked. The health benefits for consuming this mushroom are pretty great as well. They are filled with lectins, which provide anti-cancer and immunomodulation. The last time I brought this mushroom home, I let it set on the countertop a little too long and it turned into a gelatinous mushroom jello. Next time I'm going to get it into the instant pot a little sooner. So what's all this talk about the mushroom's ability of neutralizing pollutants? Well, this mushroom is known as a bioremediator and a biodegrader of environmental pollutants, specifically synthetic dyes. There are thousands of synthetic dyes used by various corporations globally. Corporations such as pharmaceutical, paper, food, cosmetic, and textile. In fact, after agriculture, the textile business causes the most pollution of our clean water. I didn't know what textile was until I looked it up, but the textile business is involved with cloth, clothing, and yarns. When you add to the equation that there's no connection with nature, greed, ignorance, and a lack of love, this is what we end up with, polluted land and polluted water. These dyes can be nasty business because they're designed to not break down. The dyes have a negative impact on microorganisms, plants, animals, humans. These compounds are known carcinogens and mutagens. This toxic crap doesn't just disappear. It doesn't just simply end up in a landfill somewhere. It ends up in our drinking water. Where Ischnoderma resinosum steps in is with its ability to break down polymers. It releases enzymes which recycle and biodegrades dead trees. Well, these enzymes have such a broad specificity that they can act on synthetic dyes in the same way that they break down the lignin in dead trees. 
Mushrooms such as turkey tail and the common oyster have also been studied to biodegrade synthetic pollutants. However, the resinous polypore is viewed as the front runner. I am excited to see where this research takes us into the future. However, preferably we can just reduce our usage of these dangerous chemicals and not have to rely on fungi to clean up the nasty mess. How cool is it that we can reach out to members of the fungal kingdom while they reach in and lend a helping hand? Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next Mushroom Time.